But you say you're going to be afraid of being nervous. Share what God did for you. Okay, my testimony tonight is that um, last um, testimony that um, Prof said that sometimes you don't be sitting on here, testimony and you're not coming up and giving anything. So I am here to say 27 years ago, I was with my third child. I was three weeks, no, one week I gave the delivery and I had a fall and I didn't take it on. And when I, when I was living in Rio Claro at the time and my father died, I came down to a river, they took me to the when I when I um, got sick, my sister in law took me to a river hospital and to Mount Hope. When my husband came to Mount Hope, they told him that the baby died inside me four days. Right? It was already poisoning me. A cord came down between my passageway and it keep on getting longer and longer. And this is not a once upon a time story, this is a real that I am telling you. Eh? And um, they induced labor for me to have the baby when the baby, I do push the baby 12 o'clock at night, it's just the hand that came off and the baby was sat like this. Doctors, nurses, everybody was around me and when they made me sign my death paper that night, because nobody was around, I signed my own death paper. And the next morning, they keep that dead baby inside me from 12 o'clock at night, four days, 12 o'clock at night until 8 o'clock in the morning, took me to surgery. I needed four pints of blood. I didn't get it. At the time, my husband was a Hindu, then converted to a seven-day apprentice, and I was just being normal. I didn't really believe in God or anything. And when I went through surgery, I needed four pints of blood. I didn't get the blood. And when the doctor told him that, first time they were operation, he did a patient, he did four pints of blood, and come out alive, he said, well, the blood of Jesus Christ was in me because of being, being an Adventist. And I've been from a Hindu home, you know, I came home normal. The body time coming up, I cleaning, I cooking, I making my parasol, lighting my beer and whatnot and thing. Then really taking on about Jesus Christ. Three days after the surgery, my cup started to bleed. The higher kind took me to Mount Hope. They fixed it up and whatnot while coming back to Arima. Onto the highway, a big truck was coming. And the truck almost running into the car. If I, I was in the front seat and if you didn't hold me back, then my cup could have opened and I could have died. That is twice I have been my life has been saved. In 2013, I had a blow that count of 2.5. I was working in Arawak at the time. I fall sick. I needed blood and I couldn't get any blood. My brother in law from Rio Claro had to come and give me blood. My son was working in Petrochina at the time and he left his work. He came up to Brandy, get the receipt, take it to Mount Hope. I got the blood 12 o'clock in night. In one hour time or half an hour time, my body was already soaked up the blood. That is another way that I have been saved. And I didn't really take it on, and you know, I keep on going on with my Hindu tradition and what that I did. And my son come and the young lady encouraged him to get him into this Hinduism. He started to get manifest all over the place, and I told him, I said, I'm a church up here. Why you don't go? Get yourself and go and take off that from you. Because anywhere you go, you will fall on. Man, not fall on, but manifest it. I have these things talking, talking towards a man who bought his sheep, guys. Kali is lunch, me is punch smoking, you're watching and laughing. And um, and if you manifest and I say go to the church and whatnot and thing, you say, yeah, 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 wow, wow, wow. And you're not taking me on. Thanks to Brother Taran. Brother Taran told him here what church and whatnot and then he came. I didn't came the first night, but I came the second thing when he was being delivered. And Right now, my son is being delivered by Prophet. Thank you very much. And pardon me. And Jesus, thank you. Come on, come on, give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. For delivering him. Amen, somebody. Now, while he was being delivered, I was getting sick. Yeah, so while God was delivering him, he started getting sick. I was getting sick, and second, three times a week when I come from work, I have to be in the hospital. When I do call him, he will leave whatever he's doing and he will come. 
I have a very, very nice child. God will always bless him, and I would like you to pray for him that he will always be prosperous and his generation will always be prosperous. While I was getting sick, um, prophet. While he was getting delivered, you were getting sick. I was sick. getting sick. So then three times in the hospital, then I came here with plaster in my hand, and when I came up to pray, you told me that this is an emergency. That same night, after service, you and the crew came to my home, you prayed out my house. I sleep very well at night. I didn't go to the doctor, but I had tests to do, and you told me to go and do tests about me that day, and I bring the results, and I show you the ultrasound, the do heart, the do kidney, the do whatever, and I bring back the test, and everything was okay. Come on, somebody, give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. The reason why it was an emergency, she was supposed to die within that beat. That's what the Lord told yeah. him and somebody. Because of the evil that was upon her son, God spared her life all those years for to know who Jesus really is. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And at this time, when she was able to really know him, amen, somebody, Satan wanted to take her out at that time. Amen, somebody. Yeah. But God healed her, delivered her, set her free, have her whole delivered her son. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. We're just going to take one more testimony and go to communion.